We really do think that we're in a, we're in a crisis. And, it's, and, it's, and it's, not, it's not only a materialistic crisis or material, it's a spiritual crisis. And I think the, uh, that, that we uh, are called as followers of Christ to res- respond in a prophetic way to the crisis that we're, that we're facing. And the, the crisis needs to be individual, it needs to be collective. And it, and it really needs, uh, in the sense that I have, is that we really need to change uh, our consciousness. And it's, it's more than education. The last time I was up here, I said, we can't do this with only our brains, with only our heads. And, and I think that's true. We need to do it with more than our intellect. We need to, we need to uh, engage in spiritual practices for us in our tradition and to encourage people in other traditions to engage in spiritual practices that open our hearts to, the, to, the, to all of creation so that we can better embrace what's going on and then take action in ways that really treats uh, the earth the way we would treat a, lo- a beloved uh, spouse or friend. Or that we would, or in the way that we would move into greater intimacy with God, which is um, one, of, which is maybe the primary um, uh, dynamic in the process of contemplative prayer, is to is to move into deeper intimacy with God, and, and at the same time, as, as this as this intimacy deepens, we open ourselves to God's uh, movement within. And uh, it's a very interesting process um, because what happens as, as, as a spiritual practice deepens, as my spiritual practice has deepened over the last, I guess, 25 years now um, of, uh, of, of, of uh, centering prayer, uh, I find myself able to deal with um, you know the starkness of our human situation and also to deal with you know one of the other folks I encounter with, with a bit more compassion with a bit more uh, kindness than I did when I started it really, really makes a difference um, but that's but I also find myself being led places that I would not go so when I was in seminary I figured you know, I'm a psychologist I'll Learn spiritual direction, you know, I'll, you know, be a big spiritual director, and da, da. well, you know, I ended up instead ministering to homeless people on the streets in Chicago, which was wonderful, as it turned out, and and then that kind of path just kind of wound its way around, and uh, and uh, until uh, most recently, Lynn and I have really um, have had the par- parallel. Um, Interests, but we really feel called to be about this project because I think it is a. I mean, it's about the, you know, it, it's. I think it's about one of the most important things that we as human beings can be about today, uh, and that is to open ourselves um, to God's call, um, to be a really see ourselves as a part of, and not a, 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 you know, apart from all of creation. Um, so. We've done a, a number of things showing uh, the last workshop that I did had to do with Celtic spirituality, which was a very earthy um, Christian spirituality that flourished uh, in the fifth and sixth centuries in Scotland and Ireland. Um, and there's mu- there's many there are many resources there. Um, what we'll be doing today is I'll be, as I'll be re- helping to recover two practices in the Christian tradition, uh, spiritual practices, that I hope that you can continue as you wish uh, together uh, or individually. Um, The first, uh, which we'll cover this morning, is centering prayer. And then this afternoon is, uh, we'll engage in a practice called singing a jubilation. And that one's almost entirely lost from contemporary Christianity almost entirely lost. Um, uh, 
contemplative prayer is pretty much lost from contemporary Christianity. Um, and uh, our, our Catholic sisters and brothers have really done a great service to Protestants like me um, to have kept alive uh, the contemplative dimension of the gospel um, since the Reformation. Um, and these, and so my teachers about uh, centering prayer, silent prayer, have been um, have been Catholic monks, uh, specifically uh, Father Thomas Keating. Well, he's a Trappist monk. I brought one of his. I brought one of his one of his books uh, uh, called "Open Mind, Open Heart: The Contemplative Dimension of the Gospel." You can take a look at it if you like. Uh, he's founded an organization called Contemplative Outreach, and I'll, I have a, a little flyer here for you, to, you know, to, to have that really will say a lot better what I'm going to, you know, what I'm trying to say verbally here. Um, but it's a very important practice, and there probably are, I don't know, fifty or seventy-five thousand people now who are a member of this organization called Contemplative Outreach, which is an all-volunteer organization that's designed to encourage the practice of. Uh, centering prayer, and now also they're, um, they've got formal training uh, for folks who wish to do Lectio Divina or sacred reading. You approach scripture in, 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 um, in four or five levels. Well, it, it's a very interesting, it, it's an, a very, an old monastic uh, uh, Benedictine uh, uh, method of approaching scripture. But it's really praying the scriptures, what it, what it is. So they're teaching that too. Did you call centering prayer silent prayer? It's silent, yes. And, I'll, and it's, you know, it's, it's only one method. The, the history of it is that um, there's a, part of the Catholic renewal movement. There were these monks in Spencer, uh, uh, Massachusetts, Spencer Abbey there, who uh, were concerned that... Um, the priests that they were working with really found their spiritual life to be fairly barren. And so they, they said, well, you know, we're monks, right? You know, we're, we're Trappist monks. You know, prayer is our, prayer are us, right? And so they developed and, and uh, modernized uh, the method of contemplative prayer that, uh, you know, that was a sort of prayer that Jesus um, did in the desert. And when he went away onto the mountain and was then carried on by the desert fathers and mothers in Syria and Egypt in the first few centuries, uh, and then was carried on in the monasteries up until a couple of hundred years ago uh, when quietism, uh, which was this... Uh, heresy um, that involved kind of withdrawal from from everything and and spending all of your time in you know in you know either in silence or in meditation uh, really uh, you know um, had an impact on people's willingness to do silent prayer and um, so it's it had largely disappeared except in the monastery except in the monasteries. Um, a few exceptions. Yeah. Contemplative prayer, silent prayer, and centering prayer are all the same thing. Right? Yeah, I, I'm using yeah I'm using them inter, kind of interchangeably. Um, or are there subtle differences? Well, there, yeah, there are subtle differences. Uh, it's theologically okay. Uh, contemplation <coughs> is something that happens through God's grace, and it is a profound resting in God's presence. And that's all coming, I mean, this is all coming, you know, from God to us. And, set, and, and contemplative prayer is a method that opens ourselves more, more to that possibility. Okay? And it was open, we're opening ourselves more to the possibility of being in God's presence. We're not causing God to be in our presence. God's in our presence all the time. What we figure out after a while of doing this is that's that's true. That God's in our presence all the time. It's just we don't notice so much. Okay? And this prayer is is designed to help us open our hearts and our minds um, to the fact that God is always with us and around us. Um, 
and it, the reason why it's a spiritual practice is, is we can't just do this. We, we can't just get to that point by wishing we were there or by talking our way there or by, you know, any, it's something that really God takes the initiative on. And there are methods during, you know, methods in the Christian tradition that uh, allow us the possibility of this happening more frequently in our lives. It's all, it all has to do with, with, you know, with grace. I mean, it's not like, it, you know, like we aren't in control of any of this stuff. We're just saying, I'm going to predispose myself. I'm going to say to myself, my intention in my life is uh, to open my heart to God's presence and action within. I mean, that's, the pre- that's how we predispose ourselves. And that's, what's, and that's what contemplative prayer is, is deeply about. It's about intimate relationship with, uh, with the living God.